Welcome back, nail queens. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and applying this McCart Dip Powder Kit. I received this kit in PR in January, and I feel a little bad, but I'm just now getting to a lot of the things that I got over the holidays, and in January, I've just been so excited for spring stuff. In this kit, there's four dip liquids. It also comes with a file and a little brush. This file is 100 over 180 grit, and the brush is good for ombres. So I really like the size and style of this brush. It's not too large, but also not too small. So I'm gonna use it later on in the video. And this brush right here is perfect for doing glitter ombres, or if you're in a pinch, for dusting off the dip powder. So here are the four dip liquids, and earlier I showed you the replacement brushes, so if your brush hardens for some reason in your step one or step three, you can just change out the brushes in the bottles so you don't have to throw the bottles away, so that's awesome. So I'm gonna get to unpacking these dip powders. There are six colors, and they are like very protected with wrapping, so you gotta pull that off before you open the jars. The size of these jars is so cute, and I love this little tabbed covering so that the dip powder doesn't spill in transit or when it's in storage in my drawers. So the first one was a glitter, and it's the only glitter in this set. Now the rest of the colors are shades of nude, so light nude, this very gorgeous rich chocolate brown. I really like this one. And then this one's more of a peachy nude. And then there is like a gray brown nude. And then this one, pinkini, which is my favorite. It's a pinky nude. So here are all the colors swatched. And I am actually going to show you all of the colors. So I actually haven't activated them or top coated them. So this is what they look like just dipped. No activator, no top coat. I really like all of these colors. It's very classy in my opinion very like work appropriate i know a lot of jobs out there have restrictions on what people can wear so i think all of these colors including the glitter are very work friendly so i'm going to apply two layers of cameras creations peel base to my nails this just helps me pop off the dip powder really fast and really easily it's an incredible peel base but you don't have to wear it if you have no clue how to use peel base so i'm going to be wearing the four colors here on all five nails and here, I'm going to use their dip liquids as well. So they're very small bottles, but very easy, good quality. The liquid, though, it does like to build up here at the top, so you might want to be careful or wipe it before you seal your bottle so it doesn't glue shut. So what I'm going to do is apply the dark chocolate brown, which I think is dark roast, I think that was the name of it, to my thumb and my index finger. I'm going to do a tonal mani, meaning I'm going to go from dark to light. So I'm going to have the darker colors on my thumb and my pointer finger, and then I'm going to work my way down to the lightest shade to my pinky. My review on these dip liquids so far is I didn't notice any odor. It didn't make my eyes watery or anything. I don't often experience that, but occasionally there are some brands where it really does affect me. There was a Model 1 set that I used recently where the activator smells literally like mothballs. So that's just, it's good that this one doesn't have odors. All of the products I'm using in today's video are going to be listed in the description box below. For example, the thing that I'm resting my hand on, my fingers, is a finger rest from Liquid Layers. It is a great option to stabilize your hands while you're doing your nails, applying the base bond. Shoot, if you paint your nails, do nail art, any of that, it's incredible. And this tool that I'm running around my cuticle area is a precision tool from Kimber's Creations, and I just use it to go around my cuticle area to make sure none of the dip powder and dip base liquid gets stuck to my skin. So I'm re-dipping in the dark chocolate color and I'm going to work my way down to my pinky. I haven't done my middle finger yet because I had to reapply my peel base. I kind of messed it up. I touched it before it was completely dry and it moved it and it got wrinkly. So I removed all of the peel base on my middle finger and reapplied it and I'm letting it air dry now. So 
I'm waiting till it completely dries before I dip. If you use peel base and you are struggling with your dip powder brush getting stuck onto the peel base, that usually happens when the peel base isn't completely dry, even if it feels kind of dry to our touch. It might not be completely dry or it's just it doesn't react well with dip base. The Kimber's Creations ones does a great job at not sticking when it's completely dry and it doesn't really leave patchy layers. So yes, I'm so glad the Kimber's Creation one has been working great for me. It doesn't give me the problems that other peel bases have given me in the past. Occasionally, sometimes our dip powder doesn't completely absorb the liquid, so you just have to re-dunk the nail in the powder so it completely absorbs. So if you ever notice that it has like some sheen on it, just re-dunk the finger in the powder that you dipped it in. I also missed a spot here in the corner of my thumb, so I'm just applying a sliver of dip base in that area and then wiping off the top so only the sliver on the edge is covered in dip base and I'm dipping in the powder and it completely fixed the missing patchy spot. The coverage of all of these solid powders is incredible. All I've had to do is two layers of dip powder on each of them. I'm actually gonna do a second layer here on my middle finger now, but I am so impressed with the coverage of these dip powders and the liquids. Although the bottles are smaller than your standard dip liquid bottles, it's an incredible formula. It's not the thinnest out there, but it didn't thicken up my nails. So my nails don't look bulky even though I have jelly tips on and I really like that. That's very important to me. So now that they're all dipped, I'm going to clear encapsulate my nails. A clear powder was not included in this kit. So I'm just gonna pull out one that I have here on hand, but you can find affordable options on Amazon. I heard Mia Secret Clear is a good clear to buy on Amazon. I think it's like four ounces for 20 something dollars. That's a great price if you ask me. So I'm gonna apply dip base to my nail and dip it in my big jug of clear. I'm actually checking the McCart Amazon page right now and I found a set of their dippies kit. So it comes with exactly the same things I have here except for it comes with different dip powders and their other set comes with clear in it. So, hmm. Let me know if this is something that you guys would like me to purchase and review. It's $24.99 at the time of me looking at it, so that's not a bad price. For everything that's included, you get six, like basically 10 gram jars, small jars, but still, it's a really good like starter kit bundle deal. I'm very impressed with this Dippy's kit situation. And I also see that they sell select colors of their dip powders of, from the Dippies kits in one ounce size for $9.99. So if there's like a color that you really love, you can actually go out and purchase it. So now I'm going to apply an activator to all of these nails. They've been dusted off. I know it looks a little grainy because of my clear powder, but that's normal. So I dusted everything off and now I'm going to apply activator. If you are new to dip powder, what this essentially does is it hardens the dip powder. So you know how in acrylic, you'll notice them dunk their brush into a monomer. I'm not saying this is the same product, but monomer is used to help move and harden the powder. This basically does the same thing in the sense of it's hardening the powder. So I'm going to give the activator a couple minutes to fully dry and harden the dip powder before I file shape and buff. 
So here is the file that was included in the kit. I'm using the 100 side, which is the more gritty side to fine tune my shape. Since I use jelly tips, I don't pre-shape my nails, but if you're doing dip powder on your natural nails, you always want to pre-shape your nails first. So I'm just fine tuning the shape to what the shape of my jelly tips are, which is an almond shape, and just making sure that there's no ragged edges and everything. And then I'll go around my cuticles and make sure that my cuticles are nice and kind of like thinned out. I don't like my cuticles to be thick and bulky. I like it to have like a thinner area, like a thin, nice apex kind of. So if you notice that there's a little bit of bulk at your cuticle area, you can file that down a little. Since I encapsulated in clear powder, the solids are protected from being overfiled and buffed. Obviously, you can possibly buff too much and then buff through your clear powder into the colored, but the clear powder is there just as like a protective safety net. I'm using this hand buffer to buff down the surface to make it all nice and smooth. This does take me quite a while to do with all of my nails, so I'm just going to skip past so you guys don't have to watch me do this for 20 minutes and move on to the next part of the mani. So after I file shape and buff, it does accumulate a good amount of nail dust, so I like to take rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and wipe it all off. You can of course go over to your sink and wash your hands instead. I just prefer to do this, it's a lot quicker for me, and I clean every crack and crevice with rubbing alcohol, so it's a good alternative to washing your hands if you don't want to. And then make sure you don't have moisture on your nails because the rubbing alcohol will evaporate and remove moisture. So I have to top coat, but first I want to read the instructions to make sure I do this correctly. And it says that I have to apply another layer of activator to my nails and then wait one to two minutes before I apply my top coat. So I'm going to apply the second coat of activator now. It's a nice and generous liberal layer, as you can see here. I don't even care if I touch my skin as activator does not glue to my skin the way step one and step three does. So now it's time to apply the step three top coat. Remember, this is essentially like a super glue product, so try not to get it on your skin if you're using this at home. So I apply a thin, easy, quick swipe, like two swipes, you saw that, it was like two swipes. And then I wait like 30 seconds to a minute, and then I go in with my second layer. So I'm just following what the instructions say. So take your time on the second layer, make sure you get the sides, the free edge, you get everything so it's nice and shiny. So I tested it on my thumb first and then repeated all of those steps on all the nails. It took me about 40 seconds to do one coat of top coat on all of my nails. So that's what I'm doing here is one coat of top coat on all the nails and then I go back and repeat starting from my index all the way to my pinky. So now that my manicure is done and the top coat is dry, I need to take care of my skin. I get extremely dry skin. It actually gets so red from the dryness, it becomes kind of painful, but it's that's my life and I just live with it. So I have this healing ointment from Sierra V. I absolutely love this product. It's worth every penny, let me tell you. I've had this since December and I've barely put a dent into it. So I take the healing ointment and I apply it to the top and underside of my nails after I do a manicure. Honestly, you can apply it all over your hands. And ta-da! So here is my manicure later on in the night. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you want me to review more kits like this.